Method number three, focusing helicoids. This is what a focusing helicoid looks like. Basically, it's a hollow tube, and when you rotate it, it gets longer and it gets shorter. One end of the helicoid is where the lens is attached. Sometimes the lens screws in or there's a bayonet. Uh, most often, though, I ended up gluing my lens onto the front end of the helicoid. And the rear end of the helicoid uh, attaches to the camera. Usually you'll buy a helicoid with a uh, mount that's specific to your camera. And I actually like helicoids like this one with the rear mount that's an M42 mount. Uh, that way I can take any number of M42 adapters, attach it to the rear of the helicoid, and then it just snaps right on to your digital camera. Now, as far as helicoids go, um, there are some negatives. One is while they extend quite a bit, they don't extend as far as focusing bellows. Another limitation is they come in very limited sizes. Here's a small one, here's a medium-sized one, and, and here's a larger one. And that's about it for sizes. As far as advantages go, they're fairly light and they're made out of metal. They're, they're quite rugged. Now, there are basically three types of helicoids. There's what I call a, a retail helicoid, like these. Uh, I buy them from eBay, B&H.com in New York City, USA. Uh, another good place to get them is photodeox.com. On their website, they call them stretch adapters, stretch adapters. Now, uh, here's a brand that, that makes quite a few focusing helicoids. It's called uh, Pixco, P I X. CO. You might want to search that out if you're interested in buying a helicoid or at least a retail type helicoid. The second type is what I call a repurposed lens. Now what that involves is you take an old lens, here I've got a uh, Tamron lens, and you remove the aperture and you remove all of the optical elements. So it's basically just a, a hollow tube. And then you attach usually glue the the lens your non-photographic lens to the front and then you already have the rear adapter that fits onto your camera so that is how you use an old lens as what we call a donor lens uh, for a repurposed focusing helicoid now here's a few photographs that I took uh, with this actual setup uh, on a, um, a camera. Now you'll see that uh, the lens that I used was what is called a Correctol 150 millimeter f2.8 lens. That's this one. And I checked and eBay doesn't sell any of them and I even did a, a Google search and, and the only thing I found was that uh, Correctol, according to Google, is not a lens but rather it's a laxative. So uh, as far as I know, this is a fairly rare lens and the pictures that I just showed you, uh, which I took on this particular adapter, uh, uh, may be fairly unique in the entire world. The third type of helicoid is what I call OEM, or Original Equipment Manufacturer. Now, what I'm talking about there is, is some um, non-photographic lenses come already with a focusing helicoid or a housing. This happens to be a Leica or Lights uh, color plan lens, and it screws in and out of its own helicoid. And when I bought this, it was attached to a slide projector. And I just screwed this off. And now all I had to do was to adapt the very end of the helicoid that came with the uh, projector lens. And I've got a real nice uh, lens that I can use on my cameras. Let me show you how that works. Here's a Leica slide projector that I bought. 
and if I take off the housing, uh, and I've got the same uh, color plan lens in this slide projector, and I'm going to screw out the color plan lens, and this is what you often find being sold uh, in the used market on eBay, for example, the lens itself. But here is the helicoid, the OEM helicoid, that actually comes with it, and all you have to do is screw it out from the slide projector, and now you've got a really nice custom fit helicoid that is perfect that works perfectly and smoothly with your non-photographic lens. Method number four, anything goes. When methods one, two, and three don't work, it's time to put on your mad inventor's hat. It's time to get creative and come up with a quirky solution that might raise some eyebrows, but it works. It'll take terrific images. For example, you might want to print out the adapter using a 3D printer. Another example would be the image you're seeing here, where I used a radiator hose to make a homemade tilt shift lens. Or the third example, using this Rodenstock X-ray Heliogon F1.1 lens, I came up with the idea of using a cardboard mailing tube to attach the lens to, and then taking a couple of rings and gluing them to the other end. Here's the image that I came up with with this cardboard shipping tube adapter, which of course can be trim to any length. So remember, when it comes to Frankensteining a non-photographic lens, anything goes. Now that we've reviewed my four methods of Frankensteining non-photographic lenses, let's take a closer look at how it's done. The next three videos are demonstrations where I show you exactly how I adapt my three favorite non-photographic lenses.